right, it is now 5.11, which means you're now listening to Binge Worthy Radio. We are back this spring and back on Tuesdays at 5. I know we're starting a little bit late today, um, but make sure you're updating your reminders for Tuesdays at 5, only on 89.5 WJMU The Quad. We also have a big announcement. If you were listening last week, you kind of heard about this, but... Binge Worthy Radio is now a video podcast as well. Mm -hmm. As we speak, we have two cameras set up in the studio recording our show. So if you miss a Tuesday or prefer a more visual show, you can head to YouTube to watch Binge Worthy Radio. Yeah, so in our video podcast, you'll be able to see the trailers we play, pictures of the actors, stills from the titles we pick, and much more. New videos will be dropped every Monday night, so feel free to go check that out. I promise after this week, it'll be every <laughs> Monday night. We had some technical difficulties in which my my computer got completely wiped of everything, mm-hmm. everything I had. So, um, <laughs> editing has been a little bit difficult. Um, it's actually <laughs> the reason why my computer got wiped, because I was trying to edit the show. So, starting starting next week, I promise it'll be on... Monday. I'm actually going to work on it tonight. So hopefully it goes all well uh-huh. and my computer doesn't um, burst into flames. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so for any new listeners to Binge Worthy Radio, this is a place to find your new Binge Worthy obsession on all your favorite streaming services. We're your hosts, Faith and Nico. Here on Binge Worthy Radio, we'll be discussing shows and movies that you can stream on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and HBO Max. We also have a segment led by Nico called Behind the Streams. Yeah, so in Behind the Streams, I'll be diving deeper into the films that we talk about to give you an idea of what to expect when you watch them. I'll let you know what to look for and even some inside scoops on how they remain. We hope that after you listen to this segment, you guys can become the film nerds that we are. And I know a lot of the times um, we enjoy binging these films and shows just to pass the time, but we're here to give you guys a chance to really appreciate the art that is filmmaking. During these weird times, we have all been spending a lot of time at home, which means a lot of binge-watching. It can be hard to choose what to watch when we have an overwhelming amount of choices. I know many people, myself included, revert to watching the same shows and movies over and over. Our show is to help listeners be aware of what is new, what is worth watching, and what hidden gems can be found on our favorite streaming services. It can be hard to find something you will like when all you know about the show or film is the three-sentence summary Netflix gives. Binge Worthy Radio! It's here to watch your review so you no longer have to spend 10 minutes looking for something only to end up watching The Office. Mm-hmm. Without further ado, let's get into today's, into today's pick for Binge Worthy Radio, only here on WJMU 89.5 The Quad. All right. Sorry, let me get a little bit comfortable uh-huh. here. We're getting started. Making sure that we look good on camera also. <laughs> um, so this, this week's pick is a little bit more like entertainment block. Buster mm-hmm. type um than our usual picks. I feel like us- our picks are usually like a combination of you know something people everyone kind of like knows about but it's also like you know cinematic and like uh-huh. artsy yeah. in a way. Um it's not like Spider-Man No Way Home like we why do we do a review about that when everyone's seen that? Um it is good, but, you know, that's kind of, like... Right, that's not the reason more, we're here. Yeah, that's a little more blockbuster, right. um, big movie type Yeah, for us. But this one is kind of kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's as big as, like, Spider-Man No Way Home yeah. or something like that, or, like, an Avengers movie. I feel like this one's also very, uh, or at least a little bit more cinematic than... Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a very looking movie um but it's still it's still a really great movie i i was i had a lot of fun watching it yeah i like this one a lot we've also been super super busy so this is like the only movie that we've been (laughs) we've had time to watch in like the last i feel like it was a good movie though for how busy we've been it's a good break and you get to laugh a little bit yeah that's joy that's exactly what i wrote in my notes was that while it's you know not really our regular type of movie that mm-hmm. we talk about on here. It's always nice to have something that's just like entertaining to watch. Yeah. And you don't really have to like think about it. Right, right, right. Um it's more just like 
relaxing and enjoyable. Yeah, I don't have to try and dissect the dialogue just to try and figure out what's to, going on. You don't have to think about the toxic masculinity in, it, <laughs> in the different um, metaphors and symbols. Mm. You don't like doing that? No. That's, that's, that's too much dumb. work for watching a movie. <laughs> well, this one was right up your alley then. Yes, it was. Um, so today's pick is the third installment, technically, to the Kingsman films, although there is a distinction. The first two are just, like, Kingsman, so it's mm. K-I-N-G-S-M-A-N. It's all one word. Right. Whereas this film, this film is The Kingsman, all, like, three. The Kingsman. The Kingsman, yes. Yeah. Three separate words, um, which makes it kind of a little bit different, but it actually works in, um this case because this one is a prequel to to those two yep. that first came out so if you haven't seen the first two you, you don't need to have watched them to see this one right yeah character there's completely nothing. new characters yeah, right. nothing i new mean storyline yeah there's it, a I connection mean, it, it, yeah it helps to know what the kingsman agency is yeah but like it's not necessary yeah so basically um Eastman Agency is, like, kind of like a secret service. Yeah. But, but like, the world, kind of. Yeah. Um, And so this film is kind of about how that agency came about. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can watch this one first and um, be, you know, completely involved and yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, like, right, you won't be right. confused by any of it. Mm -hmm. It basically explains, like, the first two films. Yeah. So maybe watching this one first is actually the better. I know. Better I, was, I was thinking the same it. thing. I was like, "What happens if you do it the other way around?" Either way, either way works, basically. Um, but this film was released in 2021, so mm -hmm. I think it was like September 2021, so not not too long ago, and it is now available to stream on HBO Max. So let me give you guys a quick summary, and then we'll listen to the trailer. So the film is about one man, Orlando Oxford, who must race against time to stop history's worst tyrants and criminal masterminds as they get together to plot a war that could wipe out millions of people and destroy humanity. So kind of, you know, a broad <laughs> topic, yeah. um, but we'll get more into what the film is about later and how this film um is, you know, comes before all the rest, yeah. how it informs the other two films. Yeah, and just kind of a background of the, the movie itself. The agency came about because this group of people decided that governments and higher-up uh, individuals are kind of ruining the world rather yeah. than making it a better place. So they created the Kingsman Agency to kind of undermine those government officials and kind of do things on the low while still helping the rest of the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of like the CIA, but it's not affiliated with the government. So it's basically right. like people volunteer to It's like a super secret service. <laughs> yeah, a super secret service. <laughs> and actually the cool part about it was, uh, they. well, I mean, you'll find out in the movie, but they started by like hiring um, like... Uh, butlers and stuff for the higher people yeah that actually goes into um i'll talk a little bit about that because this film has to do a lot with history mm -hmm. and um that the butlers and kind of the help and using them to you know get information yeah. um is kind of um supported by like the the world's yeah. history yeah yeah um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that. It'll make a little bit more sense mm -hmm. later. But for now, let's listen to the trailer. So let's here's the trailer for The Kingsman, now streaming on HBO Max. My flock. This will not be a war of heroes. Nations will slaughter each other while we get rich. This is going to be fun. <laughs> you cannot keep me locked. 
locked away as the world burns. Son, the truth is the world is ruled by corruption and greed. We must do something. Certainly. We are the first independent intelligence agency. Refined but brutal. Civilized but merciless. Welcome to the club. Very clever. It's time to pour fuel on the fire <laughs> of revolution. Yes, my shepherd. Welcome, Englishman. Rasputin, your reputation precedes you. Let's end this as gentlemen. After all, manners make us man. Is it that boys are always so messy? All right. So that was the trailer for The Kingsman. Um, check it out. It's really cool. Yeah, even the trailer itself is like amazing to watch. Like, like I could just watch mini, it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I could watch it on itself. repeat. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so like I said, the film came out in 2021, and it was directed by Matthew Vaughn, who is known for his other films, uh, Kick Ass and X Men First Class, and then he was also the director for the first two films as well. Mm -hmm. So the film grossed about 125 million worldwide, uh, which makes sense because the first two films were actually kind of a hit. Yeah. Or at least yeah. the first one definitely. Yeah, the first one really blew up, and then the second one was the one with Elton John. So I feel like that's also a good reason that that one blew up. <laughs> um, I like I remember going to see the first movie in the theaters with my dad yeah. and my brother. Yeah, I think I did the same. Um, which is kind of funny because there was like a little weird. And oh <laughs> yeah, I forgot where the ladies in the 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 jail cell or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's like just like slight nudity, and I was like, okay, <laughs> can we go now? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh... um, so yeah, the the first film definitely blew up. It was a really good film. Yeah, I, I, I really think, liked it. I think the it. first one. I do like this one, but I think I like the first one better. Yeah, I think it I goes the first one. Then this one. Yes. And then yep. the middle one. Um, the middle one was just weird. The middle one was weird, yeah. It just kind of went in just an interesting yeah, direction, I feel like. Yeah, and then people I just like. started getting slaughtered left and right. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but I feel like this one still had its own feel to it. Like a, yeah, a different feel yeah, to it. Yeah, I would agree. That was, um, a, you know, different than the first two films. Uh -huh. But similar to the first two films, The Kingsman had a great cast. Yep. So our main character, Orlando Oxford, played by Ralph Fiennes, who you might know as, um, he who sad. must not be named, <laughs> Voldemort himself in Harry Potter. He's also in Schindler's List, Grand Budapest Hotel, just to name a few. I really liked him in Grand Buda Budapest Hotel. <laughs> such a funny character yeah, in that, which is so weird because, like, he doesn't usually play funny characters. Yeah, but he killed it. And he's, like, so awkward in it, too. Yeah. I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's just that movie in general is just well, awkward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any Wes Anderson film yeah. is always a little bit quirky. Um, But I really, I really like him. I think he's one of my all-time favorite actors because mm -hmm. he's just, like, he's known for being good at what he does. He's not, not to, like, hate on other actors, like, Ryan Gosling and Leonardo DiCaprio and blah, 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 who are, like, always in, like, the news about celebrity stuff and, yeah. you know, whatnot. Um, he's just one of those actors that, like, everyone knows who he is, 
but it's just because he's such a good actor. Like, yeah. that's what you know him for, is right. being a good actor. Um, so I I really like him, and I really liked him in this, this film as well. I thought he brought, like, a really cool um, addition to mm-hmm. the, the franchise. Then we have um, Orlando's, like, team members, kind of. That include his son, Conrad Oxford, played by Harris Dickinson. He was a newcomer for me. Mm-hmm. I felt like I felt like I had seen him in something else, but then I looked up his other work and I didn't recognize any of it. What was nineteen seventeen? No, no, that's a completely different. Actor. No, I know, but isn't that who you think it was? Yeah, I thought going into the film, I thought well, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Conrad was played by a different actor. Yeah, and then once we started watching, I was like, that's not the same guy. But the funny thing is, he kind of creates the same scene. It's kind of like the same. It's like literally, the, I was watching that scene, we can't really say anything, but it's very war-esque, and he does the running down the middle of the yeah, field, no and yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why, and they're also just like tall, skinny white boys. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's why I thought it was the same guy. Um, I, I liked him a lot, though. No, this... yeah, I thought I thought he did a good job, yeah. and his character was was good. His character was more of like... He was there more for as like a catalyst in the film than yeah. he was as like an addition to the film. Mm-hmm. Like you needed him in order to have the film, but like he wasn't necessarily um like a big addition to the film. Like he didn't I mean he like the, brought the something idea to it. the idea of him brought more than I feel like. Exactly, his yeah. Did. Mm-hmm. But I mean I I thought he still did a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to see if maybe he comes up again in something else that we watch. Yeah. Um, but I thought for for what his character needed to do, I think he did a good job. Yeah. I th- I think he actually played it really well because he played that son role very yeah. strongly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have. Am I pronounce this wrong? Dij Dijman Hounsou Hounsou. Sure. Sure. Jimin. 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 It's Maybe the D-J. D silent. <laughs> I don't know English. Um, but he's. I don't think that's English. <laughs> I think it's something else. Um, he was in Blood Diamond. Mm-hmm. Um, he's actually a part of the MCU. Yeah. A small what character. was his? Um, oh, his he was a. Uh... He's no. in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Oh, well, he's in Thor, too. He's the dude that runs, um... Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, well, he has multiple characters. Uh, How is that allowed? I don't... That's what it said when I looked it up. Because Guardians is still... How do you say Unless it's it's the same character, but he appears in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I think so. Maybe that's what it was. But that's not his name in Thor. But maybe I just didn't go, like, far enough down to... to see that he was also in Thor, and then that's what I didn't make the connection. <laughs> yeah, he's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, is he not in Thor? Show more. There oh. we go. I don't know. You might be tripping. Captain Marvel. Yeah, because he yeah he was in Captain Marvel as well. Aquaman. I don't think he plays the character he plays regularly in Aquaman. Oh, I think I you're thinking? thinking of Idris Elba. That's yeah, it definitely is. is him. <laughs> but Gosh, it's such a small role. You? It is such a small role. But I mean, his his role in the MCU is pretty small too. Yeah. Um, he was also in a Quiet Place too. He's, oh yeah. He has a very recognizable face. Like, I going into this, I've definitely seen him other places, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't be like, oh, he was this person in this movie. Like, I just know that I've seen him in other films. Yeah. But I mean, he was great. Yeah, I like him a lot. As well. He's kind of Orlando's right-hand man, and he's um, an excellent fighter in the yeah. film, too. And then we have Gemma Archerton. She's known for Clash of the Titans and Hansel and Gretel. I feel like those are her two films that I was like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I see her, and I remember seeing her in those. Uh, she plays Polly, the team's kind of, like, expert marksman. She's the, you know, the shooter, the sharpshooter yeah, of the sick. team. Yeah, And then those are kind of like the big four characters in the film. 
But even in the smaller roles, we had great <laughs> actors like Stanley Tucci. I love I love Stanley Tucci. Yeah. I think he's so he's so funny. Um, Matthew Good, Charles Dance, who's from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, Rise Ethans, I think that's how you say Ooh, it. That's a cool name. Yeah, who plays a great and an absolutely insane Rasputin. Yes. He's actually um the Doctor Lizard from the Amazing Spider Man, the Andrew oh, Garfield ones. Oh no way! Yeah, that's who that was. I was like, he looks so familiar. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Huh? Um, wow, you, can't really you would tell never. In yeah, the film because I was gonna say his costume he's is insane. covered in hair. Yeah, but he plays such a good Rasputin. Oh my god, it was it was perfect. Yeah. Like, really I couldn't see anybody else uh, playing that character. Yeah. He was really cool. Yeah, it was perfect. And then we have Daniel Bruhl, who always ends up playing an evil German. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's his, like, designated role. Yeah. Um, which I mean, Yeah, because like, we were talking about it. What, it's Inglorious Bastards that he's in? Inglorious Bastards, and then he's um, the villain from um, when... Civil War. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Civil War. Civil War. Um, so, yeah, he always he always ends up playing some sort of, like, evil foreigner. <laughs> Which, I mean... He's, he's really, really good at it. Yeah, I know. I mean, if he's I'm good, I'd like to take anybody else. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I was actually kind of, like, looking at his um, biography, and he's half German and half Spanish. He was really? born in Spain. Huh. Yeah, but then they wow. moved to Germany, okay. and he grew up there, so that's why he, like, he, he is yeah, German. He, he plays a very good German. Yeah, Um. but he speaks, like, seven languages or something crazy like that. Dang. Yeah, very smart guy. But, yeah, plays a great, evil German. Yeah. <laughs> was he German in this one, too? Yeah, he was German okay. in this one. Um. And then we have Tom Hollander. Not to be confused with Tom, Tom Holland. Holland. Tom Hollander. He just does Tom Holland better. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably if you saw a picture of him, you would you would recognize him. Yeah. But he actually plays three characters in this film. <laughs> um, all different characters. Yeah. But he plays King George. Is that fit the fifth? The fifth. The fifth. Yep. Tsar Nicholas the second and Kaiser Wilhelm the second. So he plays like the big. Um, three political powers at the time. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because they're all like cousins. Yeah, but yeah, but they're, they're like, it's the exact same. The same yeah, <laughs> but we'll dress them. They up just put like bigger mustaches on a couple Literally. of them or, <laughs> or something. Well, we'll make him look a little more German yeah, for this one, right, a little right. more Russian for this one, and <laughs> British for this one. Yeah, but I mean. He was really funny. I liked yeah, him no, a lot. you did. You did very. I well. kind of like that they used the same guy. I yeah. thought it was kind of like a fun little, like, oh, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> it adds to the Kingsman vibe. Of yeah, the, movie. the like the comedic aspect. Yeah, of right, it. right, right. Um, so overall, really entertaining and fun film to watch, and sometimes you need that. Mm-hmm. What I liked best about this film was the combination of the fictional story with the real events and yeah. people. So the film takes place during, before, and during World War One. And many of the real life politicians, royals, dictators are portrayed in this film, but Orlando and his team are just like kind of added in. Yeah. Um, so there's actually like a scene where they are in the very car that Archduke Franz Ferdinand gets assassinated in. Mm-hmm. So, like, that, that actually happened. That was like the catalyst for World War One. But they were just like, oh, we're going to have these two fictional people be in this car. Like, <laughs> and they're a part of the story, yeah, basically. Yeah. So it kind of takes real history and people and puts it into the Kingsman universe. Um, so, like, some of the explanations for why things happened in history is kind of funny it, because yeah. there's, like, some truth to it, but then they... Um, they twist it a little bit. It's still, like, a made-up story. Yeah. yeah. So one example that I saw was there is a spy named Mata Hari mm. in the film. And she's sent to seduce President Woodrow Wilson. And so they, like, take footage of it through, like, the window and they blackmail him, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, But in history, so the seduction of the president is not true. But there actually was a German spy named, um, you know, that went by the same name who was arrested during World War One? Oh Oh, no way. Yeah, so they kind of, like, twist yeah, things. Yeah, right, right. Which is, it's fun to, like, watch it and be like, oh, I know exactly, like, who this person is. Right. What's going on and, like, remembering 
that in history, but it's just kind of like a little different. Mm-hmm. Which which was really cool. I feel I like that'd a be a fun way to make a movie. Like take something true and then just add your people into it yeah. and just make it that bunch better. Because then you already have like a storyline. Yeah, basically. right, right. You just improve it. Exactly. You just you know put in different different aspects. Yeah. So what you were saying about how the agency works with like um, maids and butlers who get like passed yeah. information along to each other. Um, so. During World War One, kind of that um, that idea of oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking on the word. So like basically, women were becoming um, suffrage. Suffrage. Oh. There we go. So that was kind of um, you know becoming popular. So that's why they kind of added like Polly, that main character, who's the maid. <laughs> Um, and then she gets all of her information from, like, other maids and stuff. Like, yeah. they become this really, like, powerful force yeah. and, you know, popular force. And they have connections all over. And they have over. connections all over. And so it was kind of like an ode to, like, how suffrage was, like, mm-hmm. beginning. And, like, you know, women were becoming more powerful and getting more rights and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's just, like, little, like, bits of history mixed in with, like, a fictional story, yeah. too. So I really liked that. Yeah, I agree. And then the fight sequences were so great. Oh, my gosh. The director, Matthew Vaughn, does such a cool job of filming these fight sequences as well. There's so many, like, really interesting camera angles. Yeah. Um, at one point, like, the camera is attached to the swords yeah. as they're fighting each other. That's... So you kind of see it from that angle, which was really cool. So he, while it's like an action movie, the director does a very good job of keeping it, like, fresh. Yeah, like, there's, it, it's not, like, repetitive at all. Like, the fight scenes differentiate depending on who's fighting, yeah, where exactly. they're fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At one point, they're fighting Rasputin. He's, like, dancing. I know. Too. That oh, was my so gosh. Um, but, yeah, so he he was able to put, like, his own kind of unique um, spin on, on, like, an action movie, mm-hmm. which it, it's clear in the other two films, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That I think that's why I like the Kingsman movies, just because they're so they have such a different. F- like, feel to them. Yeah, like yeah, you and watch them, and you're like, these are these are Kingsman. Exactly. Movies. I was just about to say, you can pick a scene out of any of those movies, and you can tell that it's a Kingsman movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then so another really cool thing is that there is a a possible sequel to this because it seems like they're actually going to make this separate from the first two films so they're going to keep the kingsman as a trilogy and then they're going to have the king's man as kind of another trilogy but all connect right because everything that happens in the king's man trilogy will lead up to then yeah. the kingsman movies that'll be kind of cool to see yeah how they end up doing that yeah because i mean the kingsman movies are a little bit like more modern whereas this is more um like historical yeah in a, in a way so and I like both, but and both casts are absolutely amazing. So yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the next. Yeah, couple. I would definitely, I definitely watch the sequel yeah. to this. Um, I think it was, it was really cool. Uh huh. Very, very enjoyable visually, and you know, kind of like intellectually. Yeah. Fun to watch. Yeah, and it's not too difficult to follow. No, not at all. Which we love. Yeah. <laughs> um. But with that. Do you want to go behind the streams? Yeah, yeah, let's take right, it behind the let's streams. Hear it. So, to start off, they had a $100 million budget, which, I mean, makes sense. It was pretty big sets, a lot of uh, expensive equipment, I'm sure, especially for all the choreography. And you have to pay a lot of people just for action sequences. Yeah. Um, like, you need the choreographer, you need, like, safety officers, you need just a bunch of people just for those action scenes alone. So, makes sense. Um, and, I mean, they know how well their past movies have done, so I'm sure they can um, oh, yeah. justify paying $100 million to make another one. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, they still made they made money off of it, too. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, they definitely did. I think it was uh, domestically 37 mil, international 88, and worldwide they made 125. So, they did pretty well, I would say. Um, but it was filmed in the UK and Italy, and actually, 
the King's Man's first working title uh, was Kingsman the Great Game, and the Great Game kind of came from the historical term that was used to describe the political face-off between Russia and England in the 19th century, actually. Because um, that's, that's, they called it the the war that um, happened before World War One, like the lead-up to World yeah. War One was, I believe, called the Great War. I, I, I read that somewhere. Keep going. Sure. I don't know history, but... I believe you. I like history, so I like it, but I, I just feel like can't that's why I liked anything. it so much. Yeah, I was always really good at history in school. Yeah, uh, see, I can remember facts the night before, and then it's gone once I write it down <laughs> on a piece of paper for the test. Yikes! Um, but yeah, they decided to actually go against it because they didn't want it to seem like an actual I just game. Found it. Oh, it was called the Great War. Wow, look at that! So smart. You would have aced the history test. Go me. Go you. I just wanted to put that out that I was right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they ended up going against uh, the great game because they figured that it would get off the wrong type of uh, vibe for the movie. It wasn't a very competitive film necessarily, but it was just an ode to the the Great War. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. So the Kingsman franchise is actually adapted from the comic book series icon comics which is an imprint of marvel comics so technically the king's man is a marvel movie it's this it would technically be the sixth marvel movie of 2021 hmm. which is kind of cool interesting yeah right um but something cool i wanted to point out so for our 1901 productions class uh we use uh black magic which is a pretty nice cinema camera and actually this film was shot on a better version of what we use which was kind of cool it was shot on the black Ma black magic pocket cinema 6k so they obviously had a much better camera but it was the same brand um and they also used davinci resolve for the color um and going off the colors there was a couple different feels to the film there was a lot of uh, blue and orange like we kind of mentioned mm -hmm. in the last one um but it was it was more muted tones. It wasn't very vibrant and in your face. It was kind of just cinematic and um, like the shadows weren't too harsh. It was very soft in yeah, general. Yeah, it was very soft. Um, and then the there was also the couple of the war scenes that became very like saturated and dusty yellow, which was kind of cool. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed those um, just for a different feel because it wasn't as peaceful. It was more like in your face and. Uh, it was quick cuts and stuff like that. So I think the color matched that well. As for the story, uh, it was good. Uh, like we kind of mentioned, the history part was really cool uh, to implement. And then there was also, I feel like a lot of films, that if there's a twist, it comes at the end. Whereas this one, this one it came like in the middle. Through the film. Yeah. We were like, oh my god, what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> but it was kind of cool because it set off the rest of the film yeah mm -hmm. um so and i think like, it, it, the rest of the two films too. yeah like, yeah right this one event that happened randomly in the middle yeah. of the film was the the catalyst for all the other films yeah and it was kind of like a punch in the face when it happened like it yeah, was right? you were not expecting no, it whatsoever you're like cheering getting all excited and then boom you're like what no <laughs> they can't do that it was so random like there yeah. was like no lead up to it no either. yeah it was you just, like, couldn't bam. have seen it coming we were like did that actually just happen? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look out for that in the middle. You'll know exactly what we're talking about once yeah, you get there. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it's it's unfortunate, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Just a bit. Yeah, but um, story was good. I want to talk a little bit about the choreography because the fight scenes were, I think, my favorite part. Definitely. Uh, it's just something that you don't see. Like, on top of... Just the absolute beautiful choreography of the way the characters move around each other, the way they fight. It's almost like a dance. Like, yeah. uh, it was, it, you can, Rasputin. yeah, exactly. <laughs> the one with Rasputin, you can see that the choreographer's vision kind of comes to life, especially in that scene. Yeah. Um, whereas in the other ones, they're fight scenes, but it has a sort of rhythm to it that you kind of get into and it, it gets very exciting. Um, but the one thing that always stood out to me about the Kingsman films was the slow-mo of these fight scenes. There's not a lot of films that you can pull off slow-mo mm -hmm. that look good. But this one is probably 120 frames. 
um, maybe even more. So it's super slow mo of like very in depth detailed shots. Um, and it's just something you don't often see in a fight scene because a lot of the times fight scenes are quick cuts in your face, people just throwing swords at each yeah. other. Whereas this one, like I was kind of saying, there's a rhythm to it. It's not all fast paced yeah. and uh, it makes it, it allows for these fight scenes to be a little longer than normal because mm -hmm. you don't get stuck in these repetitive motions of lightsabers slashing against each other on the left side yeah. and then the right side. Mm -hmm. And then it just keeps repeating. The director does a good job of pinpointing like this would be the perfect time to, you know, slow it down. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. And speed it back up. Yep, right. And even, like, there's certain scene, fight scenes where, like, somebody will go down, and you're like, oh, they won, and then they come back, and yeah. then it starts all over mm -hmm. again, and it keeps going and going and going. Yeah. Um, and Rasputin never dies. Because <laughs> he eats poison for breakfast. <laughs> Little legend. <laughs> but, yeah, I... I I've always loved the Kingsman films. I'm a sucker for these types of movies. Yeah, Very yeah. beautiful, but like in your face and exciting films. Um, and yeah, I think the slow mo, the cinematography, the the wide shots, but yet the close detail shots, mm -hmm. they do everything well in a cinematographer's yeah. eyes in this film. There's even like a scene where our main character, Orlando, like falls out of a plane yeah and he's like doing a like a hundred somersaults yeah. like back and forth you know yeah. vertically or horizontally whatever and like the camera's just like going yeah. with him too like you're you like feel like you're like yeah. falling out of the sky <laughs> yeah. with him it was crazy so yeah that's probably where a lot of the hundred million dollar budget goes definitely. to definitely uh there's also this one shot of a submarine that's absolutely mm -hmm. stunning it has to be VFX, but it looks so yeah, real. Yeah, there's no way. I no, don't think yeah, they'd... it's so we go under the water, and then you you see the submarine like as a whole ship, and you go into the point of the submarine, and then you go through the walls and through all the way back to the little like scope thing that they yeah. have. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called, but they can see above, and then they can see everything in the water. Um, and then it, like, reveals the character. And no, it doesn't. It, well, it reveals who was behind oh, the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's, not, not, the, not actual the actual character, actual character person, himself. Yeah. yeah. But then you see him click it. Right. And then you get shot back yeah, out. right, right. With the... the torpedo. torpedo. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was so cool. And actually, going off of the character reveal, the main villain does not get introduced to you until the very end of the yeah, movie, which was, was awesome. I was thinking about that, because when we were talking about how um, there's, like, the, that like one twist in the middle of the film mm -hmm. i was like well there's actually a twist at the very end yeah, too yeah because the whole time true. we just there's the main villain but we never see his face until the like last 10 15 minutes of the film mm -hmm. um and that's like a a cool a cool shock as well although I called it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I called yeah. it. In your head, so there's in no my proof. Head. In my head, because I wasn't 100% sure about it, but I feel pretty good about myself yeah. now afterwards. <laughs> but but it, was, it was really cool. Yeah, they did it really well, too, because uh, most of the time, like in the beginning of the film, it's a lot of shadow side shooting, mm -hmm. so it, he's too dark, and the background is very light, and you can see everything else, which is a cool way of doing it. But then they also kind of change it up, where we see um, maybe chest down, and we see his hand, they identify him by his ring oftentimes. Yeah. And then there's also a scene where he's fencing. So he has his fencing mask on. Yeah. And then when he goes to take it off, we're behind him. So we yeah. still can't see his face. And it just, it's stuff like that that keeps you engaged. Yeah. Without like. You're like, who is this guy? Yeah, exactly. The whole time. Especially because you get a lot of people in the film that were real people. Mm -hmm. You're like, is this supposed to be like a real person yeah. a fictional person who is this scottish villain <laughs> that was that was my best impression of a scottish accent <laughs> it wasn't bad thanks maybe it's the irish in you maybe <laughs> you got close maybe. i'm close enough <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think uh overall just for behind the streams it, I, I mean for me it of course it was one of my favorites yeah um i live for these types of movies yeah they're uh, very action-packed yeah and the storyline was good it was beautiful 
yeah, it checked all of my boxes. So yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. How many couches? <sighs> See, I, this is a different type of scale. Because it's not like our normal films. Yeah, but you can still have a really good. Okay, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it an eight. Eight couches. Eight. Yeah, I think. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna take it back. I'll give it a nine. Wow. I, I liked it. It's it's the slow mo crazy shots that yeah. they do that bump it up for me. Yeah. Because they the, the You're films a that we person. usually yeah films that we usually review. There's nothing. I mean, they're very beautiful, but it's oftentimes very static. Sh- that yeah. are just very, mm-hmm. they're wide, they're centered. It's more what's in it that's like right. really Right, they're framed up cinematic. perfectly. Whereas this, it's a lot of camera work, mm-hmm. which I think a I have a lot movement. of appreciation for. Yeah, true. So yeah, I'm going to give it nine couches. Okay, okay. Um. Well, before I give it couches, I'm going to backtrack what I said. Uh, uh, the Great War is technically the same as World War One. Oh. You can interchange the two terms. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Okay then. I thought Good it was. To know. I thought it was before World War One, like it was leading up to World yeah. War One. But I think you can, you can interchange the two, even okay. though it's mostly called World War One. Gotcha. Just wanted to point that out in case I get any history buffs at me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Not I, me. I would have believed you. <laughs> I'm just you know, it's all confidence. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I guess that's why that that working title that they had yeah. makes sense. Yeah. That right. was cool. Um. I would probably give this seven couches. Ooh. Maybe seven and a half. Just because, like, I liked the film overall. It was a really fun film to watch. I just thought, like, the storyline is a little... It's it's a lot for a two-hour film. Like, I don't know. It's just... There's just a lot in there that's, like... There's no way that could have happened. Or it's just kind of, Oh, yeah, but that's the whole point. Yeah, I know. It was more of a fun film. I like... I'm... I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think if I were to rate it as in, like, entertainment and, like, just, like, me liking it, I would probably give it higher, but more in, like, a a film standard-wise. The, the, the film plot line is just a little, like, you know, they're just like, well, let's throw that in. That works. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I guess. See, I'm um, not here for the storyline. But it was it was a fun it was a fun watch. Yeah. I really I really liked it. This I would is, watch it again. This is definitely. a good film for well, everyone over the age of how I don't know. 16. This one wasn't as bad as the first one though. I thought this film. It's very gory though. Yeah, I guess. I still not as much as the first one. Like I yeah, like the first one the was first bad. One... Where, like everybody's head starts blowing yeah, up. Yeah, in, ch- in a yeah, church. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but also, yeah, no, it wasn't that bad. This one doesn't have as much of a comedic presence as the first one, I think, I agree. Did. I That's true. I wish it had more of a comedic presence, but I, yeah. I don't think it would have... The A lot of the comedy was carried by Rasputin, yeah. which I think was done well. Mm-hmm. I, think it, I, I don't think, think it's it needed anything extra, especially through history. Yeah, it's hard to do comedy more in, like, a historical sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it still had, like, comedic aspects yeah. to it, of yeah. course. Yeah, it's very... King's Mini. Um, it was like smart, witty yeah, comedy. Yeah, but I definitely think that first that first film is the one to watch if yeah. you really want to get the like the entire Full, Kingsman yeah. Um, feel. Yeah, I guess agreed. But yeah, I still really liked it. Good. Yeah, I like. All right, all right. So, anything else to add? No, I don't think so. All right. Um, We're just gonna... keep an eye out for the submarine shot. The submarine shot. Yeah. Yep. That, that one's important, too, because that um, foreshadows the ending twist, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, the identity of the villain. So, look out for that. That's 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 the scene where I was like, hmm, this guy's kind of sus. Not to give away too much, but... Yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to end the show now because <laughs> you, Nika's got to run off to class. So yep. we're going to, we're going to end it let the music play for a little bit mm-hmm. and we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. So we're wrapping up a little bit early. Do you want to take us out? Yeah. So it's now unfortunately four minutes to six, uh, which means our time here is up. We hope you enjoyed our discussion of this film as much as we enjoyed sharing it with you. 
If you end up watching um, the title that we picked today, let us know by putting your thoughts in the comment section of our two videos yeah. and subscribe for more binge-worthy content, which there will be an existing <laughs> comment section soon. I promise. Soon. I it's promise. coming. <laughs> but yeah, don't forget to check out our first binge-worthy radio video podcast on YouTube at some point, some point. soon. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Maybe there'll be some updates there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, keep binging and binge with the radio. We'll be back next Tuesday at 5, only here on WJMU 89.5 The Quad. Bye. Bye.